For years, we thought it was pretty hard to leave the UFC while still being in good standing. The number of fighters who leave the promotion of their own terms can be counted on the fingers of one hand, and the remaining 99.9% .9 of fighters leave the league when it no longer needs them. But the stable order of things has come to an end. The heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou had unheard of audacity and, as the heavyweight king, was able to escape the clutches of Dana White, rushing to meet offers from different leagues. The Cameroonian predator thought the whole world was waiting for him with open arms and millions of dollars, but now, three months after his departure from the UFC, we can officially say that Francis Ngannou was not needed. But how did that happen? It's time to find out. All of us know the touching yet inspiring story of Francis Ngannou. Even as a boy working from morning till night in the sandpit, he always dreamed of becoming a world champion boxer. Naturally, the boy's idol was Iron Mike Tyson, and the Cameroonian wanted to look like this TV hero. And as a result, Ngannou had begun training and even boxing and moved to France just to find a gym and a boxing coach. But on the way of the Predator, a specialist in MMA, Fernand Lopez came across. The coach discerned in the poor African boy a great potential and invited him to his gym, from where Nganu had already come out as a fighter. We will not talk in details about Francis's mixed martial arts career because you already know all about it. Instead, we will focus on the most interesting part, that time when Predator became the UFC champion. In his rematch with Stipe Miocic, the Cameroonian took an intimidating knockout in the second round and then went off the radar for a while to heal a knee injury. Pretty quickly, the UFC set up a fight for the interim title between Cyril Gunn and Derek Lewis. The technical Cyril dealt with the Black Beast with ease, and a few months later, it was expectedly announced that Ngannou would go for his first title defense against his former teammate. On the same date when the best heavyweight in the MMA world were in active camps, the phenomenon of 21st century boxing, Tyson Fury, crushed veteran Derek Chisora for the third time and announced the end of his athletic journey. Soon after, information about the fee of the Gypsy King for the victory leaked into the network, and the amount there was estimated at tens of millions of dollars. Francis, after watching Fury earn more in one show than Ngannou himself made in his entire UFC career, was covered with black envy. He wanted to be paid the same money, not even understanding why Fury was paid so obscenely much. The heavyweight champion voiced his displeasure on the net, and there was a real wave of resentment towards Dana White. Francis, for coming in ESPN, I'm the boxing heavyweight champion, UFC heavyweight champion. And we're going to find out who is the baddest motherfucker on the planet. He's a good looking Javi, isn't he? Yeah. Have you got a big Corey? Huh? Have you got a big Corey? <laughs> oh, no. Big what? Big Corey. <laughs> This is getting off the chains, but... Some fighters began to demand higher wages, while others asked for health insurance from the promotion. The catalyst for the conflict, Tyson Fury, lit the fire by challenging the Cameroonian to a fight. From that moment on, the African began to lose his sanity. The fight with his old teammate was not easy for him, and Predator had to win the way he had never won before, by wrestling. But it did not embarrass him at all, and he continued to insist on organizing a boxing fight against Tyson Fury. The contract he had with the UFC prevented Ngannou from not only fighting the Gypsy King, but even negotiating with representatives of the other side. Then, the Cameroonian decided he would do everything he could to put impossible conditions on the promotion and then wait for his contract to expire and run away. From that moment on, months of difficult negotiations with Francis Ngannou began for the UFC. The Cameroonian was an important asset for the company, and on the horizon was John Jones, who was preparing for his move up to heavyweight for three years. Nganu, the heavyweight champion, and Jones, the greatest ever fighter, were the main goals of all the important people in the promotion, and Hunter Campbell, in an effort to keep the Cameroonian for himself, had over 70 meetings with him. It's worth saying that the offers from the league were more than generous. Francis was rumored to be guaranteed $8 million per fight, and his contract was supposed to be set at at least five fights. Just think, with his contract, Predator could become the most paid heavyweight fighter in the history of the promotion, surpassing even Brock Lesnar. But that wasn't enough for the champion, and he began demanding strange terms, like health insurance for all fighters in the roster. There was a feeling that Ngannou just didn't want to take the fight with the great and terrible John Jones, so he stretched the time. Pretty soon it became clear to us what the champion was really waiting for. In January 2023, the Cameroonian giant was announced as a free fighter. His contract had come to an end. Francis was just happy and was leaving the best MMA promotion on earth without a backward glance, and Dana White almost directly called him an idiot who gave up fabulous money for ghostly profit in boxing. We worked with this guy for two years to try to get him a fight. He's absolutely impossible to deal with. He, he's a, he, no, We're, he'll, he'll never be in the UFC again. So he made his decision. The martial arts fans were immediately divided into two camps. 
Some supported Francis, calling him a fighter for his rights and freedom, while others furiously condemned the former champion for his rash decision. Ngannou himself was happy to finally be rid of the agreement with the League. In the first days after his departure, various rumors swirled around the Cameroonian. Promotions of all kinds wanted to sign him, from Asian 1 to Russia ASA, and some famous boxers like Deontay Wilder give their verbal approval to fight the Predator. He was even invited to a fist-fighting league, Bare Knuckle FC, where Ngannou, with his punches, could legally kill people. However, news soon began to fly that the most formidable heavyweight on the planet wouldn't sign with anyone. First, UFC's direct competitor, Bellator, was screwed, followed by the fist-fighting league. Naturally, Francis did not consider any offers from Russian promotions, and he was not going to fight someone less famous than the Gypsy King in the ring, although Derek Chisora offered him a fight. Such a fight would have been quite realistic, but for sure it would have been a media failure, and Ngannou gave his refusal. As a result, within a couple of weeks of his leaving, the Cameroonian rejected most of the contracts he received, and everyone who tried to contact him and in one voice, he has some inadequate demands. He wants too much money, and we can't afford to spend that much on one fighter. Of course, the words are slightly different, but I'm sure you get the general idea. More recently, one championship has entered into serious negotiations with the Cameroonian. Not too long ago, the league received increased funding and could now afford to splurge even on such an asset as the former UFC champion. In general, nothing prevented the signing of Ngannou, but it was not fated to come true either. As the president of the league, Chatri Sityatong, states, Francis made some really crazy requests. In addition to a contract that included $20 million per fight, he wanted a seat on the promotions board of directors and the ability to choose fees for his future opponents. Some madman's nonsense, to be honest. However, the head of one has known for a long time that he likes to exaggerate some details and sometimes not even slightly. But I think there is some truth in his words. Right now, there are no alternatives left for the Predator except the PFL. The management of the promotion has declared their intention to fight for Ngannou, and in general, they have the best chance to sign Francis. Not everyone knows it, but the American League has signed with a boxing company, and there is nothing stopping them from organizing some MMA tournaments and putting the Cameroonian against some no-name in the main fight of the evening, making a loud headline, the return of Francis Ngannou. But how much money would Ngannou make for such a fight? In the best case scenario, it would be 8 to 12 million, or rather a lot less. Even if all the stars came together and made that kind of money, it would be nothing more than a one-time event. The PFL doesn't have that kind of resources to comfortably pay for that kind of performance at least twice a year, and no one knows what's going on in Ngannou's head right now. And there's hardly any way to figure it out. It becomes clear in his blind pursuit of money, Francis was left at the bottom of the barrel. Every day since leaving the UFC, his market value has continued to drop precipitously, and the hype caused by such a high-profile event has long since waned. Tyson Fury, who the Cameroonian was so eager to fight and get coveted tens of millions of dollars, is now just ignoring the guy. It seems that all the challenges from the Gypsy King were originally just empty provocations and he was not even thinking about fighting some heavy weight from the UFC. In this case, even realizing that there will be no boxing with his participation, Ngannou continues to consider himself the center of the universe and put himself on the market with such demands that not single MMA leagues in the world would satisfy. As a result, because of his blatant greed, pettiness, and banal inability to count money, the world of sports lost the best MMA fighter heavyweight today. But to achieve all his goals, Ngannou would have to sit down and sign a damn five-fight contract with a guaranteed payout of $8 million. Think about it, the first person Francis would have met with under such an agreement would have been John Jones. Back from his downtime, yes, Bones sensationalized himself by beating Cyril Gaon in a ridiculous two minutes, but could he have done the same thing to another guy, many times more massive, more powerful? How would the fight have gone if he had been a little further? No one knows, but even after losing to the greatest fighter in history, the Predator would have been left with a huge performance check and a contract of more than a few fights that would have netted him at least $40 million in total. And what would happen in the scenario of a victory, or in general a terrible knockout with an uppercut? All of Ngannou's stock would have skyrocketed so fast that he wouldn't have had time to count. The media benefit of such a promotion might not have been comparable to the initially bizarre idea of jumping out on a boxing match against the world heavyweight champion. In this wave of hype, Francis, who can hardly be called a popular fighter, could easily become one of the main assets of the promotion. Tournaments with his participation could sell even more pay-per-views, and this, thanks to the interest, would only increase his fee far beyond those $40 million. Francis Ngannou's story is a cautionary tale of how being the best heavyweight in the world can leave you with nothing in a short period of time. The Predator has the best possible terms in his hands, a fancy contract in the fight of the century with the greatest fighter. But when did Ngannou do? That's right, he quit. 
By chasing two birds with one stone, one of the most intimidating fighters in MMA history became a laughingstock whose fate could be used to make a textbook example of how not to negotiate. It's hard to predict what would have happened to the Cameroonian predator, but one thing is almost certain. If he had stayed in the UFC, there's a 95% chance he would have earned more than he did during his entire career. What's your opinion on this? Share in the comments.